A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. Now this has been a lovely week and so many things have been progressing. The year has been going on really well and we had a conversation last week that was related to digital content creation and the law which was a very interesting story. Now today we want to focus on something that's kind of similar but different in a way. We have this different generation generations from the millennials to the baby boomers and now we have the gen z who are a very hot topic across all platforms we are believed to be kind of different from the rest of the generations and we want to figure out are we really that different can you understand a gen z and is the way our mind works a way can we express it can we try to make the people the millennials in our social spaces in our workspaces in our home settings understand a Gen Z. So that is the conversation we're having tonight. And uh, here with me are some lovely Gen Z ladies. We have Rachel Ndanu, who is a HR specialist as well as a content creator. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. And right next to, to her, we have Natasha, who is also a digital content creator as well as a media personality with a podcast. Karibu. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. I like the fact that we have lovely ladies with us today. And before we start the conversation, I want us to have a look at some data that was shared. So let's have a look at that and progress with this. So this data, it was a recent survey that we did, uh, that was done, I mean, and it says the Gen Z's hate the 8 to 5 work routine and prefer working in shifts or working from home. Uh, another fact is about 80% of the respondents also agreed that being an influ influencer was a reputable car career. Uh, the next uh, piece of fact we have is four in every five Gen Z's would take up the chance to leave the country if the opportunity presented itself. The last fun fact uh, we have on this uh, slide is they also prefer starting their own businesses with 75% of the Gen Z's wanting to be famous while 25 answered to the contrary. And uh, these were a bit of some fun facts that we had and uh, some of the jobs that Gen Z's prefer was one being a business uh, entrepreneur or self-employed being a TikToker or influencer being a doctor an office job being an engineer a lawyer a musician or a comedian an online writer a farmer and a boda boda right uh, rider sorry so these are a few of the jobs that gen z's prefer and let me tell you a fun fact <laughs> in studio I was noticing the facial expressions of <laughs> our guests and they resonate with some of these ideas, especially the facts about the lifestyle and the kind of life that we want to lead, the Gen Z's particularly prefer to lead. So I want you to go on our social media platforms right now at Y254TV and have this conversation with us. Do you think you can understand a Gen Z and you as a Gen Z, how do you think you like to live? Do you prefer the traditional life or would you want a more easy life, like a different life? Because people talk about soft life, squeezy. <laughs> and we want to understand what all these terminologies, what all these ideologies are rooted in and where they come from. Mm -hmm. So both of my guests are digital content creators, which is one of the jobs that is preferable. Why do you think, Natasha, why do you think digital content creation is now something that people want to get into? First of all, I'd say, personally, I like it because I get to express myself and get money while doing it. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. So you get to express yourself. You get to, you know, um, bond with people from different places. They don't necessarily have to be your friends, you know. And it has really good money. Let me just add that. But if you know how to package yourself, you need to know how to brand yourself to get the good bag. Because yeah. out here, I've seen friends who are taking small, small money. And it's not <laughs> cute. Honey, let's do better. Yay. <laughs> I like that. Because we can tell just from, from your response, you're expressive. You want to you have opinions and you want to share them and people have to listen yeah and that's another thing that's popular with gen z's danu do you think it's something that's came from previous generations or do you think gen z's are more vocal and we're more expressive because she said that we like being on social media using those platforms because you can really express yourself and you're free you have creative freedom mm -hmm. 
Do you think it's something that came up in recent years or did we borrow that from the millennials and previous generations? I think it's a combination of borrowing from different generations and the fact that Gen Z itself is a globalized generation. We've seen how different individuals live in different countries and sometimes if you look at the content that people are putting out, is them showing the, the thoughts in their minds and them expressing them. So if they can say that, why can't I say it? You know, and mm. that's why we are so expressive because we've seen it before and it actually works. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a combination because honestly, we do not live in like a traditional setting, partly because of technology, because of globalization, because things the, the you know the world is just a global village right now so yeah. it's easy for us to connect to people across uh, borders and do we think that's influenced our characters what really the, 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 the globalization <laughs> has that really played a role in making gen z's who they gen are Z's. yes yeah. yes i feel i feel like Gen Z's are Gen Z's because they get to see each other grow. Like, you know, the previous generations, they were not in, on the internet, so they were just living. But us, we get to see each other grow from across the world, you know, you know yeah. uh, someone in, in Europe doing this. But then again, I feel like um, as much as that has greatly influenced us and our personalities and the way we express ourselves, it really was time for someone to speak up. It was time. Yeah. People were getting tired. And I don't think even even though there was no internet or the globalization of, you know, the world, um, I mean, uh, the, the world being a village, yada, yada, you know, I don't feel like it would really matter because mm. it's, it's about it time. Is time. It is about time. Reminds me of that song of, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and that's another thing I've noticed about Gen Z. Mm. There's, there's those common things. I've seen this so many times on social media. People saying, I did not know we grew up experiencing the same exact things. Because yeah. someone will share, you know, my African mom used to do this. Yeah. And even in the US, someone can resonate with that <laughs> same exact thought. Yeah. So do we think, or because of the internet and technology and all these other trends, do we think that we relate more with each other than previous generations? Because, you know, Gen Z's, I feel like you can sit with someone and just start bonding and have a conversation Fact, regardless yeah, of yeah. the race, the, the Age, tribe, yeah, all those things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that your experience? You know what? I think life is very cyclical and I feel like um, every single generation have had a similar experience. The difference with us and them is that we talk about it. Yeah. They didn't used to talk about it. And even yeah. when they used yeah. to talk about it, they talked about it in the third social place, which was like maybe church or uh, if they go on the playground and stuff. Most of us didn't have that, but we had the internet. That was our, our third social place. Yeah. So if someone from Europe talks about their African auntie, me in Kenya, I'm like, isn't that the same woman that I lived with? All yeah. this time, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. resonate. Yeah. Like yeah. with my auntie back here, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that has really helped people because now it just feels like we're all friends on the internet. Most times, most times, because there are times when people are just mean for no reason. Yeah. Mm. But on that note, do we think um, uh, have we become we're, we're a bit more unhinged? Unhinged in the sense Ooh. that yeah. I, I'll mm. say my thoughts because yeah. there was a video I was watching uh, someone saying um, um, my intrusive thoughts no longer feel like intruders <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like, that's actually really funny you know yeah. <laughs> my brain that, that, allows that them know, actually they didn't break <laughs> in they just were allowed in and uh, in that way I feel like because of the expression yeah. people are a bit more unhinged mm. like you'd be willing to tell your boss I'm not resonating with this because of this, this and that. Whereas in previous yeah. generations, people will be like, no, I can't say that. I can't tell my mom this. I can't share yeah. that. Mm. What do you think about I that? I genuinely feel like it is not really being unhinged. It's us being real. You know, I feel like Gen Z's are basically what people used to suppress. Yeah. You know, like you're so mad, you can't, they were mad at, at their bosses, but they, they just seated, calm, collected. Do you want me to mop the floor? Okay, okay, I will. <laughs> but Gen Z's won't do that, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we are more of the suppressed millennials and whatever, whatever they felt like they couldn't say, we say it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the difference. It's not necessarily being unhinged, it's just being real. It's just being it's truthful. Being yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the... 
you know, the, especially like when we go to the African setting, people weren't encouraged. The youth weren't encouraged to speak up because you have to listen to your elders. It was more about listening than being vocal. Mm. Mm -hmm. But now there's the encouragement of speak, share, talk about it. So that has made people be a bit more free mm. about some of these conversations. Yeah. And uh, the Gen Zs, you know, we grew up at... We're now in the digital space, but also to look at our traditions, Kidogo. Because some of us, I believe most of us played Nje, and we, yes. we grew up yeah. in that era of the Nokia yeah. Sidri Gani. So Shuru, we, yeah. Kati, yeah. 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 we had the nice man. balance of yeah. so the outdoor yeah. versus right now when people are just like on their, on phones. their phones all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. So Rachel, how do you think that has really impacted your character today? I think I would accredit to the fact that it's the it's the older generations that raised me, so I am a consequence of the older generation. So yeah. let's not act as if y'all didn't have it inside you. We are just the consequence of this. Let's just start. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> it started somewhere. Yeah. It started somewhere. <laughs> and second, it's um, the appreciation of the expression that we had from our childhood, and it exponentially becoming to a point where our intrusive thoughts aren't intrusive anymore. Mm -hmm. Because when I was younger, I could go talk to my dad. Hey, this and this happened to school. Da -da 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 -da. Because yeah. I got that audience I got more confidence to talk to people who I don't even know mm. Mm. that's where it started off yeah, yeah. Mm. so mm. we have to give credit where it's due yeah. it's Facts. the parents and yes. honestly as much as personally the African parents were tough yeah. they still give you the platform <laughs> <laughs> they like the expression everyone was like yo <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that they still allowed us to be ourselves. In some ways, we were given the freedom, but still, kulikwanele traditions kidogo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go into that family space, because I think the way we relate to our parents is also different from the way our parents related to their parents. Are we more free with our parents? Hmm. Are you more free with your parents? Yeah. Let me just put this out there. I don't, I don't think, okay, probably we were raised differently, but I don't think that our parents really give us the freedom. Unless mm. like your parents are different from most of the parents I know. Mm. Gen Z's take what they want. Yeah. Okay. They are hard-headed. So there is no way you're going to come tell me, don't leave the house. I will leave the house and I will come back True. and I will sleep in True. under your roof. And that is a Gen Z for you. <laughs> so basically, I feel like it's not necessarily them being free with us. It's us taking what we want. Sometimes Ooh. it is not the best decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of you, you, you'll go outside, you'll, your phone will get stolen. He, she won't buy anyone. Oh, Trust no. me. <laughs> I mean, they won't buy are, are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> they won't buy a new one. Yeah. But then again, within the more you do it, the more they let you go a little bit. Yeah? True. The more you do it, the more you do it, the more know, they are yeah. saying, you know, ah, well, uh, it's okay, go. <laughs> and then after some time, they just let you go. Yeah. So it's more of us taking it than them giving us our freedom. freedom. That's true. Yeah. And you know, that's reminded me of someone who was talking about, in an African household, you don't ask for permission. It's better for you to say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Can I go? Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm back and I'm really sorry. I should have told you before. <laughs> but I just knew you weren't going to say yes. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So do we think, because the, the Gen Z parents are so different. Like, I don't know if either of you have witnessed the Gen Z as a parent. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, most yeah. parents give their kids the freedom completely. They're like, mm. yeah. do you? You know, mm. are we different because maybe we were we felt like we were oppressed and we needed that freedom, kid to go, or we desired it, and now we want to give the kids that? Do you think that's the case? I don't think it's uh, it's just one hundred percent like let the let the, just, the child just go. No, I think it's the limit of I was not given this. I did it, but what happened? Nothing happened. So it's the it's oh, the concept yeah. of how far did I go? Because yeah. I feel like when the child pushes a little bit too much, like, the African mother will come out. Will come out. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to pop out mm -hmm. the African, in, and I think you know most people say I'm going to be a chill parent. You have to get yourself in a situation a with lie. a child. <laughs> 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 realize you are not <laughs> chill. You, you are not. not you're your mother's daughter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're some cray cray. Mm, you know. <laughs> And on that note, most older generations will say we are lazy because mm. we're not willing to do half the thing. You know, mm. people in the past were willing to break their backs. I will be in the kitchen, Ilea, Yanje, Mawe, Tatu. Unimewasha moto, but these days we're like, no, my nails. 
we need to buy a machine. <laughs> There's something for that. Exactly. Are yeah. we lazy or are we adapting to the times? What would you say? First of all, the amount of time I've been times I've been called lazy. Oh my god, I could be a billionaire if I was getting a coin for each time. <laughs> really though, because me personally, I've I don't I don't get the point. It does not it does not bring a good reputation. It does not bring in money. Why? It doesn't add value. It does no. not it does not give you a trophy. And I don't understand why people tend to like um lean on it so much. Yeah. You you just want to. You know, it's like no. Personally, if there is a machine to cook ugali, we will buy it. <laughs> exactly. If there is a machine to cook chapati, we will buy it. Mm. If there is a machine to do anything that I, I don't want to do and I have the money, why not? Yeah. You only call me lazy if I am supposed to do something and I don't do it for a certain reason that is, you know, a, a stupid reason. But then yeah. again, if I, you know, and, and then they like to, to, parents like to make you work yeah. for no reason. Like, bring me the the remote that's over there. Literally. At you go my phone. You're in the bedroom. And it's just over no, there. No. <laughs> you know, it's for no reason. Like, you do it. You do it. I mean, it, it, the fact that you have a child doesn't mean you have a maid or you have a worker. No. Mm. Let a child breathe. And I think that is also where the difference between parenting comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because I also think, maybe our parents feel like, I've ever been with a child, by the way, and you're at yeah. home, and you're like, Mimi sani ende maji. Temu ende You know? <laughs> and that's not right, though. It's Cause not it's right. Because right. no. maybe it's like a toxic <laughs> culture. But I was sitting with my cousins and we were thinking about it until Kotna Sema. Are we are we taking advantage of these kids because they're mm. young and they mm. can't say no? Is it free labor? Because one time one of your, our younger cousins wasn't around and we were like, oh my God, if Winnie was here, she'd she just would get me water. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe our parents think like that mm. and they expect us to, to act that way. But then yeah. we say no. And when we get to the work, workspace, because Rachel, you in HR, yeah. Gen Z's in the workspace, Will not go above and beyond. <laughs> ati, ati, ati. Wow. Iko like job description yangu ni hihi na hii. Ni membo ni kuze ni set up camera, ni operate for that show, and then that's I'm it. Mm. Gentis are like, I've clocked out. Yeah. My at 5 p.m. I'm out of that. <laughs> I'm <seeing> the beans. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So why do you think we, we react like that? As opposed to, you see, millennials or the, the baby boomers, they will break their backs. They'll be at work putting in the hours. Mm. And you're wondering... Wagwan, what's, <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Why do you think that's the case? Well, if you think about it this way, why give me a contract and give me something outside of my contract? That's I would start there. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. The second thing would be, why why would you assume that I would actually want to go above and beyond on this if it's not giving me value? Because yeah. if I'm ever going to go above and beyond on something, that means I want to learn it, yeah. or it's coming with an extra bit of money. So am I getting a commission for it? No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Get somebody well. else to do it. <laughs> and you know, that resonates with so many Gen Z's because most Gen Z's I've met are not willing to do that. Like, mm. unless there's something at the end of it. And the older generations will tell you, no, you have to put in the work, especially when you're younger, so that you build your portfolio. <sighs> tell us, what do you think? Honey, no. <laughs> No, no. First of all, I hate I hate this culture of people working for free, internship, attachment. It is it is literally you are taking advantage of people because yeah. you know at, at at some point there are my classmates in school who are literally p paying fifty Gs to get an internship. Yeah, you're going to work what? for free and you're paying to go work for free, which is insanity. That's what is the culture crazy. here? Yeah. What is going on? <laughs> I'm you shocked. know that is that is it's crazy. crazy. That's that's so crazy. I know. Uh, oh, you know, animation is not. Honey, I will not pay you. I will not pay you for me to come work for you. That's yeah. crazy. That's mm. man. Mm. Let's even start there. And then, when when you tell me to to work um, for free for my portfolio, honey, no, I will work. You pay me. I will build my portfolio with the work that I paid uh, that you paid me for. It does not have to to be at oh for free so you can. Honey, no, I'm not mm. doing that. Personally, I won't. But what about the people who actually see? Because realistically, 
when you apply for most jobs, they'll tell you we want three to five years mm. of experience. Mm. <laughs> I've seen those films of people working when their kids mm. you know, build their experience. Mm. How will you get the experience? How will you build your portfolio to say I actually did this mm. and here's the record of it from a particular company without you actually putting in the work? Rachel, how are we supposed to build our portfolio and get all these years of experience without that? Because clearly... We don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we want compensation yeah. for every little thing mm. that we put in. Mm -hmm. And the other generations, you know, they're the ones who are running most of these companies. They're still in charge. Mm -hmm. They still hold that ideology mm -hmm. of you have to come in, prove to me that you're deserving of this, and then I'll give it to you. So how do we build our portfolio up? Well, coming from the corporate perspective, I think there has been a conversation about compensation even from the point of beginning. So this is something that is already changing as we speak. Mm -hmm. The second thing would be, could um, the hiring managers or the people that own the companies look at other ways that an individual has grown their portfolio? Mm -hmm. For example, Nosim over here has a podcast on her own. Uh, honey, I had to. I had to. Okay. I was working towards getting my portfolio, but it backfired. But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Anyway, it is what it is. If I was an employer, if I was a hiring manager, and uh, I want someone who wants to, who, who is expressive and, and there's a specific portfolio that I want them to cover, and nothing fits the job, mm -hmm. she has her own podcast mm. that is actually working and has engagement and views. It's the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. I would actually look at it in this way. Can we change how it is that we look at experience? Because experience doesn't mean working for someone. a specific yeah. employer yeah. with a yeah. reputable. Come on. Mm -hmm. Micro. Yeah. 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 Period. Yeah. Period. And I also feel like Gen Z's are more like, they're more self-employed. They'll do it by themselves. You don't want to hire me? Cool. cool. I'm going to do it myself. Like just what I did. They, yeah. I, 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 this, this side it backfired. So I went to build my own place where I can show people what I do. If someone wants to come look for me, they can go there, find me, see my work. That is my portfolio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you do that? How would you encourage someone to start? Because so many people talk about you can utilize your digital space, you mm -hmm. can get into content mm -hmm. creation, you can start your podcast. Everything is at the, the palm of our hands yeah. these days. Yeah. How do we get that? Because so many people, even convincing your parents, mm. you know, because sometimes mm. your parents want you to go into the corporate life, mm. then they feel like you're successful, you're mm. doing something. Mm. How do you convince them this is going to pay off two, five years from now? How did you do that? I am not condoning being hard-headed in the family, <laughs> but I was... I, I genuinely did not tell anyone in my family that I'm doing it. Yeah. I got a phone that I felt like could record me well and I could like, you know, voice myself. My voice would be hard well, my, my face, it on a kind of story. And I just started posting. Mm. I posted and, and consistency and I showed up even when I didn't want to show up. And they came to find out that I'm actually a big deal when I was trending the other month <laughs> about energy radio. Yeah. And after, after they, they noticed, they were like, oh, okay, so you, you, I think you should start a podcast. And they helped me that after they mm. realized mm. how big of a deal I am. Yeah. That, is, that is just basically what you should do as a Gen Z. If you feel like your, your parent is too hard-headed to listen to you, do it. Mm. They will never tell you, go out because you're trying. Aye? How? Yeah. Yay. Mm. That's, that's really nice because they also feel like in your 20s, that's when you need to experience all these things and try mm. and fail as much as possible yeah, just so try that you everything. yeah just try yeah, everything yeah. put yourself mm. out yeah. there yeah. and we were having this conversation about the how difficult it is to just put yourself out there because so many people are opting to do content creation and you know just starting podcasts and shooting videos that sort of thing because mm. now it's easier to do that the softwares are available yeah. we have multiple good quality phones equipment mm -hmm. is all over but you've blended that the corporate and Ooh, the digital actually, congratulations you yeah, know that's really yeah. hard. it's Thank really you. hard yeah. and yeah. i think the balance because nine to five is demanding mm -hmm. and content creation is also demanding because it's like 24 7 mm. you're on the clock yeah how do you balance that okay, let me stop you there i work i go to school and i do content creation girl Thank you Where? very much. So, <laughs> Girl. The, the key is um, mm -hmm. there's 100%. So under that 100%, allocate percentages for each. Mm. So maybe, I'm going to say maybe work is like 60%. And then school is going to take like, I don't know, 30%. And then content creation is going to take 10%. 10 Out of that 10%, I will put 100% of that 10% at the moment. Mm. So it's just, um, it's just about realizing this is where I am. This is all I have to do. And you have to do all of it. You have to. There's no option. Mm. So so you have to div divide yourself and be consistent with it because at the end of the day, if one falls off, 
you know yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and i like that because um one thing i've come to see about the younger generation is people want to have a plan b plan c plan d you know traditionally people yeah. would be like i'm employed it's a nine to five i have pension i don't know yeah, you get yeah. pension when you're done mm. and all those things so you rely on that mm. people don't want to do multiple other things but as we've seen people even want to get into farming mm. don't mm. do muda boda yeah, riding yeah. Mm. and i met a guy who he's in construction but then in the evening he's a boda boda rider mm. so Ooh. gen z's are doing multiple things at the mm. same yeah. time yeah. why yeah. do you Returns. think that's the case because i feel like gen z's want to retire their parents early mm. that's one and they want to retire themselves early mm. so they tend to send to kujituma you know it's mm. send yourself kujituma mm. yeah when at, they they jituma and they they, they make uh, sure that they are present and they understand that yeah. for you to reach where you want to reach for you to do what you want to do in future probably travel Mm -hmm. yeah. probably um go to visit um places that you've never seen before mm -hmm. you know different countries mm -hmm. diff you have to put in the work right now yeah. you are your youngest this is your literally prime time so basically i feel like they understand that they understand that this mm -hmm. is the time that that they you know they mm -hmm. have to to work there yeah assholes. so you yeah. have to work hard now so that in future you have yeah. a life of ease yeah. sure is that because we've probably seen older generations still putting in the work when they're older and we're like, mm, don't you feel like you need to be chilling? Or is it also because we've been exposed to people traveling mm. and making money from crypto mm. and, you know, digital products? Why do you think the case is like so? Like, why do you think we, we want to retire early and just live our dream lives and not have pressure like this? Because we've seen it's possible. Like I said, the mm. internet has shown us so many things that are possible. Yeah. And we, we've seen people who talk about the journeys, how it is that they got to where they got. And mm. it's easy for you to, to see that, oh, they're doing too much. Gen Z is just trying to live the baller life and all of that. That's not true. We've seen and it is not wrong as well. Exactly. It, There's it no medal for wrong. suffering. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say out here. And the harder you work, you know, it's not going to necessarily translate to money. The but... <laughs> But the smarter you work, mm. that's where the money comes in. Mm. So from where I sit, Gen Z is not necessarily hard work. It's what can I do within my 24 hours and for me to get better? And I feel like that's yeah. where we are. That's why we're doing so well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's so true because of the exposure. Now on that note, let's talk about the social life, Kiasi. Mm. Like every yeah. other day, like Sherehe, Sherehe, we're going to brunch. We're going to do, try to do what club. We're going to try this new restaurant. Genders are out there. Because yeah. when I think about um, my personal childhood, I didn't. I saw my parents sacrificing more than giving into pleasures more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every time my mom would look at me and I'm like, I'm going to a restaurant. She's like, where are you going? What do you mean? And then <laughs> next week, you are at cinema. you next week, you are at cinema. So is there a difference? Do we like luxury? Because the way you're saying that you, you, you do not ascribe to the, the struggle culture. Why do you think that is? I feel like we have, we have me personally, I've seen, I've seen people suffer. I've seen people not ask for things. I've seen people not take themselves out, not appreciate the work they do. Where has it gotten them? They're old. Do you do you have memories? No, you don't. Yeah. Do you have something you can say? You know, I I got this. I like m myself. I got a podcast, and then I don't do nothing about it because you know I'm working. I am working. I am working. Yeah. No, take yourself out. You know, self appreciation, small small self love. You know, it's not mm -hmm. so bad, and it also helps with your mental health as well. Because the moment True. you keep on working, you keep on working. Where am I going to get the mental strength to work the next week and the yeah. next? Week? Hey, honey, we also need four days, five days for weekends. <laughs> we won't mind yeah <laughs> i like that <laughs> i like that <laughs> and that's a really good note to to get on because gen z's wanna penda yonini so let's take a very short break and then come back and hear what rachel has to say and we can get into the nitty-gritty how we can find the balance the work-life balance and how we can help people understand us because we need to move because the times are moving yeah. so let's take a very short break but go on our social media platforms at y254 share your opinions share any question share an experience that you have and we will sample that when we come back <laughs> 